I love that. Uh, let's start with uh, the playoffs. I want to touch on the Nets Celtics series. This has been one of the most competitive uh, first round series that we've had. Uh, obviously, Boston's up 2 0, but both games were just fantastic playoff basketball games. Um, is this, you're, you're a basketball fan. You, I assume, grew up watching Kevin Durant. Is this the most out of sorts you've ever seen him? Because for me, it is. Yeah, I mean, it was it was tough. His shots weren't his shots weren't weren't falling. But I was talking to you know somebody earlier about it. Like he went four for seventeen and still had twenty seven points. I mean, that's <laughs> like, and then for us to see someone who got shut down and had twenty seven on seventeen shots, I mean, that's he's he's still pretty amazing. R- RJ, speaking as someone who's played well against this defense this year, what how do you how do you play the this Boston D, the way that they switch and just with the length and everything like that. Yeah, no, they're they're tough, especially when they had uh, Robert Williams in there. Man, he's he's a big game changer too. Um, they just they switch really, they switch everything, and all of them are just aggressive. All of them are aggressive, and and really, Marcus Smart kind of leads the leads the charge there. So, no, they're they're pretty good. My observation in terms of Kevin and what I've seen this series is like any offensive player, you want to be in your comfort zone. You want to be in a rhythm. You want to play at your own speed. And it hasn't mattered whether he's on the ball, bringing it up the court or at the top of the key, getting ready to go in a pick and roll or like last night, a bunch, they tried to ISO him at the elbow in that 17 to 18 foot area. And the initial defender, is just giving him no room. Derek White switched onto him multiple times last night, and he had no airspace whatsoever. And then if you look at the back line, there's always a second or third, sometimes a third defender ready to come. And I don't know if it's if it's advantageous to keep putting him in these spots. Like they kept talking about on the broadcast last night, movement, movement, movement. And so for you, when you've gone against a defense like Boston, um, or you've gone against a, a, another great half court defensive team. Can you just sort of talk about like the different ways that you think about getting uh, getting into your spots through movement? Uh, sure, what you said that's the key word is movement. You know, because right now, uh, as you know, in the playoffs, like a team like Boston is going to look better just because the refs aren't calling as many fouls, and you know, like and it something I've heard before is if all five players are fouling, the rest can't call all of them, <laughs> you know? So like they're, they're, every time he tries to catch the ball, they're like, they're, they're hitting them, they're fouling them. And, um, but like you said, movement, just kind of got to try to get off it and, and try to get them some easy buckets. Did, did you, and obviously Atlanta last year was a very, uh, a very different defensive team than Boston is mm-hmm. this year, but the defense always ramps up a little bit. What did you sort of experience or what did you feel or sense going against a playoff defense last year in the first round? I, what I learned, the biggest part was how important the mid-range is, you know, for, for a player like me. Um, coming off the screen, they, they try to just funnel me into Clint Capella every time, you know, so trying to go up against a footer every time down there is, it's tough, you know, so that's why you see in the playoffs all the guys that are making those mid-range shots, they just – they look way better. 